In February 2019, the urban agenda was taken into account by the Ministry Cabinet. As a work methodology, its intention is to make cities develop in a fair and sustainable way and to make them the ideal place where citizens want to settle down and remain. It's a useful tool that groups and different departments of small and big municipalities for economy, climate change, sustainability, housing, etc. Direct communication with a clear leadership makes it fundamental for citizens to express their needs and desires. And this is not in vain because the city councils need to respond to them. That is the topic that we will be talking about in the new program, Looks of Public Participation, created by the De Paso Innovative Teaching Group, Marta Lora Tamayo, Professor of Administrative Law, and Antonio Lopez Peláez, a Professor of Social Work, who we can listen to now without further ado. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you are listening to our program. Welcome to a new radio show by the participatory group, this group of good practices around public participation that UNED and the City Council created. As you know, in this series of programs called Looks on Public Participation, throughout almost 30 programs, we have been inviting people who are relevant in public participation. Apart from Antonio Lopez Puelay, how are you? How are you? He is a co director of the participatory group at UNED with me. Together with us is also Sonia Hernandez Partal. Sonia, how are you? How are you? Good morning. I'm doing fine. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with you. Sonia, it's a true privilege to have you here with us because she's a sub general manager of the Mobility, Transport and Public Agenda Ministry. Public Agenda written in the title. She might be a bit embarrassed if I say this, but she's almost the founding mother of the Spanish public agenda. I know that she doesn't like to acknowledge that, but from the ministry, they have built the Spanish public agenda. I don't want to continue myself. Sonia, tell us, what is the process like? We're creating public agendas in our territory. This is taking place. And how is this linked to public participation? Thank you, Marta, for your kind remarks and introduction. This is a teamwork led by Angela de la Cruz who is Public Agenda Subdirector. I've had the privilege to participate in the process from the start. What is this Public Agenda process like? It started with the need, the key need to reach common agreements in sustainable development and urban topics and take them back to the territories as a ministry, we were able to negotiate the, the public agenda framework of the UN, the 2030 agenda together with the, the European Union too. And we thought it was necessary to make all of these global concepts land because what is international feels far away. And we needed to bring them back to our municipalities and territories. What we did was to use tools that these frameworks recognize. We started technically from scratch with this goal. We wanted to translate the global concepts and make them tangible at a local level and trying to broaden our subdirections vision beyond urban planning to more comprehensive global vision that reflects the global concepts. And that's all. And uh, where do we stand right now after this experience? Well, I think we are in a very exciting moment. We could have never dreamt of this when we started. Public agendas as a document were taken into account in the Ministry's Cabinet Council of 2019. We started conveying that a public agenda is not just a consultation document. It's not an academic thing. It's about action. And 
for it to be a call for action, we wanted the public agenda to collect an action plan for the general administration of the state. That was one of the main approaches. But also because we wanted to be really real, tangible, we had to guarantee the implementation by local authorities, which are the ones that are closer to our citizens. So basically, the public agenda had to serve as a tool for city councils because it has to be at the disposal of citizens. We started working with four city councils that were in the drafting process. Four courageous city councils said, let's start working on it. Let's see how we could implement a public agenda in our territory. I'm going to mention them. I'm talking about A Coruña and Murcia, Castellón and Alfaro, representing a municipality of less than 10,000 inhabitants. That was very courageous of them, as well as the Granada deputation and later the deputation of Barcelona. So, with that representation of bigger and smaller municipalities, we started implementing pilot projects. With a lot of work, as Marta was saying, we started spreading the word about what we were doing and what we wanted to do, telling about the tool in local entities and yes basically the word spread and we had around 70 public agendas all of a sudden in the middle of this we had to overcome the pandemic and the recovery plan allowed us through a call for a to really boost these pilot projects right now within the call we have 117 pilot projects that we have guided throughout the whole process and we have also started working with other 50 that were beyond the call for help because they didn't meet all the criteria, but they do want to work on the tool of a public agenda because it's useful, even though they are not guided by us, but we do support them throughout the way from all the points of view and as much as we can because we can't do much sometimes, but we exchange knowledge and experiences. What an incredible process. You have synthesized this in a very humble way, but your initiative, your leadership capacity from the ministry and the capacity to make municipalities excited, that is fantastic to make them believe that this is possible. You were mentioning Murcia, one of the city councils that we have worked with the most. I think these kinds of municipalities that have started with these tasks, they have a specific DNA, so to speak, because they really want to show all of these public policies to their citizens. That's where, I don't know if you agree with me, but I think that public participation goes hand in hand with public agendas. There's a desire to convey and to receive from our citizens to know what they think, what the kind of future they want for their city is. Tell us, in these plans of action, because many members of UNED are listening to us and others who are who are really not in the public agenda world, but who might want to know what is it, how can I engage in this process as much as I can from my field, I'm talking about youth, the elderly, how are public agendas linked to public participation? That is something that is happening and that interests us a lot. Yes, cities like Murcia, they had a social council that was really powerful. They have a lot of experience in European topics, in strategic planning topics. And most importantly, this is a work that is done by people, by teams. Part of the success of a public agenda is the local entities enthusiasm, people who want to do things, who move forward as a city from their perspective. It is key to get people involved. It's key to have public participation in the implementation of public agendas. But it's been very revealing. Public agendas are a work methodology. I remember that Murcia was one of the first cities that we visited. I am very excited about this and I had the chance to talk to two technicians, Micah and Mercedes, and I told them, are you aware that you might be too enthusiastic? What if you change your mind or what if you cannot respond to needs as you wish? 
and they said to me, well, we don't care. Even if a public agenda goes nowhere, it's really useful so that we can really organize what we want to do in Murcia. And that was it. That was enough for me. From this point of view, other city councils followed with other pilot projects. We had a very humble approach. From the start, we were saying we don't promise anything. Public agendas are a voluntary thing. It's not a mandatory thing. There's no money for anything. It was a terrible selling on our part. We promised very little, and yet we have got really far. How do urban agendas contribute to your city? Well, it, this is a very straightforward document, a work methodology that is so simple that it needs to be implemented in municipalities of less than 400 inhabitants and huge cities like Madrid, Seville, Valencia. Why is it so straightforward? Because it's just proposing to change the way we perceive cities. We are used to public administrations working separately on sustainability, housing, mobility, etc. But frequently, and this is a problem for the general administration as well and autonomous communities, there's little communication between the departments. And the reality is that all policies, urban policies and others, land in our municipalities, our towns, our cities. So it is essential that we change the way we work. Urban agendas have such a simple methodology that it allows departments to talk to each other. For this to be possible, we need a clear leadership from the city council. Sometimes it's more of a political leadership. There are city councils who are more interested in working in networks of cities and these kinds of initiatives, but also technically. I remember there was a pilot project where an architect said, oh, I love this tool. It gives me more of a technical perspective. That was the way we started to work from this leadership. We had to really analyze what's the situation for our municipalities right now. Urban agendas provide a structure of strategic aims. What we want with this is to basically prioritize and establish clear diagnosis of the territorial context, how they respond to climate change, how they mitigate climate change, how do they deal with the use of natural resources that are limited, circular economy, social programs, economic programs, mobility, housing, everything. And we also talk about new technologies, urban economies, and the new tools that we need to meet our goals. But it also allows the city councils to show off about what they have already done and then what they want to achieve. Also, at European level, all of this needs to be measured with evaluation, assessment and monitoring indicators. Because if not, you cannot really check if you're doing things or not. That is broadly speaking, something that can be done by consultancy, offices or other stakeholders. There needs to be participation, though. Participation is key. Urban agendas needs to be an option to give all departments a voice, but more importantly, give citizens a voice without demanding of them to have a specific knowledge, a technical knowledge. Urban agendas have to do a lot about the context, the individual circumstances of each people are important. They need to participate, guided by obviously what is feasible, what isn't supported by us, and making sure that each stakeholder is in charge of their competences. I know that I'm dwelling on this a lot, but one trait of urban agenda participation is that it demands a response. It never leads nowhere. If something that they proposed is not included, we need to tell the citizens, well, this is not feasible. This is not maybe possible in the short term, but it will be done in the long term. That is the approach for urban agendas. How interesting for those listening to us because urban agendas and participatory processes entail a massive point of view because we're placing 
citizens at the center. It's like co-design, creative design or initiatives in public participation. And it's uh, what precisely this program is responding to, an exchange of best practices of public participation. However, we need to talk about participation fatigue. Administrative processes are what they are, and there needs to be an increase of awareness of the collective construction of a city, that goals are common. Have you observed in your time in this project this fatigue and what mechanisms can we use to prevent participation fatigue? And at the end, how can we assess public participation? I totally agree. I think there are two key factors. The first one is citizen awareness and engagement, because you cannot ask people to participate in something that they don't know about. The people who participated in the pilot project had gone through training and communication. There were days where we invited different stakeholders, like the social council members of different parties and town halls, and we told people, hey, this is what we are doing, and this is interesting for your municipality because of these reasons. And we've also gotten other experiences, other town halls to participate in these workshops because it's important that citizens understand, well, this is not the brilliant idea of my mayor. No, other city councils are working on exactly the same thing. That was a very important element for us. And secondly, we need to understand that public participation processes are not about, I'll just ask you and then never get back to you. That leads to fatigue. There are many open processes at the moment. It's like a formal procedure. But what we want in urban agendas is to create a communication, a dialogue, a bilateral communication between town hall and citizens. Hey, this is what we are going to do. This is the outcome document. These are the identified challenges, etc. By following action plans, we want to also monitor if the participation of citizens is continuous, if the thing that we asked citizens back then has been responded to, for there to be a continuity. It's key. Spain has always included participation in legal procedures, in urban planning especially. But the reality is that later, only those who are really interested participate. It's true that it's so difficult to understand certain documents and sometimes you need technical knowledge and that's how People don't feel like, that's why many people don't feel like participating. But this is so straightforward, just knowing that you can really provide your opinion on anything and then it'll go back to technicians, etc. But the first approach is straightforward. Just provide your opinion about what's around you. Look at the different strategic goals. I think this has been one of the key strengths to explain the success of this kind of participation in these city councils. Having said this, some town halls had never started a participatory process. And through this process, they have understood the, the importance of having them. This goal was unthinkable at the start. It's delightful to listen to you and thank you so much because these are exercises that really get into citizen democracy giving visibility to those who, who don't have a voice. It's about defining collectively what is most important to us. Participation is key. Thank you so much. I wish it just depended on me, but urban agendas entail a lot of work from our ministry. We have a lot of amazing teams working on it. Their job is crucial. I also wanted to make a small remark Urban agendas are also a governance tool for the general administration of the state, but also a regional and local level. These are an amazing source of information. Analyzing these plans of action coming from participatory processes allow us to know firsthand the needs of our citizens and to help those municipalities who cannot work alone. So, yes, it's a key source of information to design public agendas, but also help 
planning, budgeting, and exchanging knowledge. Participation is linked to training and awareness, but also, as you were saying in the participatory group, it's about exchanging knowledge and experiences and all municipalities working on urban agendas and that have action plan are constantly getting in touch with each other, sometimes without the need for the ministry to insist. You have supported the town halls. You have met all of these municipalities to give them a hand, not imposing a process on them, but supporting them and guiding them. This is the new governance the multi-level governance that we so often talk about, but it's something abstract, but it's becoming tangible as you are describing through this process because there's a real cooperation and it doesn't come from an imposition. It's a horizontal cooperation between different territorial levels and public authorities. So congratulations. Thank you for giving voice to this kind of experiences through this radio show. This might help other town halls who might be wondering whether this is the right time to start their urban agenda to start the process. And we could maybe invite you again for another program to talk about European financing behind the public, the urban agenda implementation. Thank you so much. I would like to encourage all municipalities to join our pilot projects. We have municipalities that don't even have 400 inhabitants, but we can do this regardless of size, as long as the criteria is respected. We don't impose anything. We just guide them and support them to interpret the European document. But it's you can be as flexible as you need. Some might want to be more concise, more precise, and small municipalities might have 40 action points, whereas others of 1,000 inhabitants might have 19 action points. It's about being able to commit, to be accountable to your citizens and to be able to explain to them what the impact has been and why you did or didn't implement an action point. It's not about beautiful words. It's about turning action into a reality. We need to forget this idea that you can only implement action points if you have the money. But what about deadlines? Sometimes we don't have enough people to work in a short time. There are always inconvenience, but we are in a much better place than years ago. Having this type of planning also responds, in the case of European funds, to the requirements of the European Union. It's not about a call for subsidies. It's within a framework of a strategy, a reflection process. It's about a diagnosis of strategies, etc. And if this is the case, the project will not only be successful, but will also be more likely to be subsidized because it will be linked to a strength, a challenge, a need. That is how we are working. And it's not easy. It's very difficult because it's difficult to break the routine of not working with other departments. But the fact that this is a voluntary tool and a strategic tool is helping us talk about cooperation and not imposition. I think this all adds to the success of urban agendas. We are in a very good place. It's about the strategic planning that Europe asks from us. So I think, yeah, that these are the main qualities of urban agendas. Yes, we need to remind the listeners that we are the main resource. People like Sonia, it's not the European funds, it's our own capacity to work together, to work as a team. As she was saying, it's about flexibility, planning, cooperation, leadership. And yes, organized through different calls and programs, and etc. This is the end goal of participation. Thank you so much, Sonia, for this lesson, for this conversation, for sharing with us your journey. And we challenge you to come back to our program to talk about the 10 best experiences that you've seen in urban agendas. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to 
talk about what talk about what we are doing so that we can reach more municipalities. It's about spreading the word, disseminating what urban agendas are all about, and hopefully more people will be convinced that this is a right tool. It's not only for municipalities, but also at universities and UNED is really helping us spread the word in their classes, workshops, conferences, programs, etc to tell about urban agendas. This is key. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to participate. I'm here for anything you need. Also at UNED, we have the advantage of having the best professor of administrative law, Marta Lora Tamayo. We are very lucky to have her for a long time. We didn't have professors like her. It's important to say this. Yes, and she's really excited that when she was talking about what the ministry has done, I was thinking about her role when everything started. Back then it was a dream and now we are grateful for Marta's support of Urban Agendas for spreading the word and for inviting me today. It has been a privilege to work with you. I am blushing. Let's finish this program. Thank you so much because this has been a pleasure. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Sonia. Take care. Bye. The series looks on public participation, bets on reflecting on public participation. Today in the program, Sonia Hernandez Partal, Sub-General Director of the Transport Agenda and Mobility Ministry, interviewed by Marta Lora Tamayo, Professor of Administrative Law, and Antonio Lopez Peláez, Professor of Social Work, both at UNED.